680 News Business Editor Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, WestJet is planning to fly further than ever before. The airline buying long-range 787s with plans to head to Asia. Yeah, big news, Janella, from Canada's WestJet. Boy, that airline, it's grown dramatically in recent years, and it's going to grow even more now. So WestJet buying at least 10 Boeing 787s, brand new aircraft. These are the ones Air Canada is taking delivery of. Air Canada has about 37 of these. Cheap to operate, and they go far. It will allow WestJet to fly to Asia for the first time, as well as South America. They could even do a Vancouver to Sydney, Australia route with these 787s. And so look for WestJet to uh, target some uh, offbeat areas in Asia, some underserved markets, according to experts. They could also go head to head with Air Canada on Toronto to Beijing or Vancouver to Beijing. And uh, the CEO, Greg Soretsky, says today that their business class will be quite swanky on these new 787s. They will have live flat seats. That will be a first for WestJet. Critics, though, Janella, say that the airline now it won't be as streamlined. They're muddying the waters a bit with these new aircraft. So that's what the critics say. The stock actually was down three and a quarter percent on some soft earnings today. Well, I'll be interested to see how competitive those prices are, too, right? Yeah, that's right. They're a low-cost airline, so we'll see what they, uh, those prices look like. They're going to take delivery of those planes, by the way, starting in 2019, Janella. All right. Well, let's also talk about the Looney, which has been losing some altitude today. Absolutely. Looney's been under pressure now for the past couple of weeks with this, uh, you know, trade dispute brewing with the U.S. Uh, as well. Growing concerns about Canada's housing market weighing on the Canuck buck. And you add to it oil, which uh, is uh, moving lower below 48 bucks per barrel. That's pressuring the Looney. Canadian dollar down to uh, below the 73 cent U.S. mark. So not good news, Janella, for those getting ready to maybe head to the States for their summer holidays which are coming up yeah i mean we saw that those ads from new york a couple days ago yeah. begging us to please come please come visit us all right so the home capital crisis continues and that's sparking some financial worries sure it's a big story and we've been following it here on on city news home capital stock of course plunging last week down more than 50 percent uh last week uh, the trouble started after it was revealed uh that uh, some of its mortgage brokers were allegedly falsifying mortgage applications what home capital does they provide subprime loans so loans to those people who can't qualify for a mortgage from a regular bank. Uh, home capital stock actually managed a gain of 11 percent today, but critics are worried that the trouble with home capital could spread to other lenders. And we actually saw another smaller lender called the Equitable Group saw its stock sell off today, and it's been down sharply. So worry about contagion here, Janelle. It's a story we'll continue to watch. All right. Let's talk about Apple. Uh, they're just in with their earnings. What did they show? Yeah, a mixed earnings report. Uh, first of all, better than expected profit for Apple for the latest quarter, better than expected revenue. Their revenue for the last three months totaling $52.9 billion. Investors didn't like, though, the iPhone sales numbers. Company shipping 50, uh, 50 million iPhones, 50.8 million. That was less than expected. Uh, its guidance, so its projection for the coming quarter, also not as good as what traders were hoping for. So Apple stock down about a percent in the after hours trade. Should mention, Janelle, they got a lot of cash in the bank. Apple has a cash pile now of 256 billion. How about that for a bank account balance? Wow. Okay, <laughs> finally, let's talk about Starbucks because they're at it again. We saw all that hoopla with the unicorn frappuccino and uh, I have a special delivery delivery yes. to my desk. Uh, yes. This is one of their new limited edition frappuccinos. Tell us you, more. You and I, we're going to get to try. We're going to be, I think, the first people in Canada to try the, the oh. newest Frappuccino. I want to show it before we try it. They, I, I want to, but before you try it, let's take a look at it. It's called the Midnight Mint Frappuccino from Starbucks. It's made with extra dark cocoa, blended with coffee, milk, and mint sugar crystals. This is trying to be, you know, the new uh, unicorn. Starbucks also coming out with a mermaid Frappuccino, pink oh. and purple, and uh, vanilla bean in that one. But let's give it a try, Janella. Yeah, this I don't is know the, about that one, but I. I'll no. try the mint chocolate chip. How about that? So here's the, it does, comes out on the fifth. So let's give it a shot Cheers and see if it you. lives up to the unicorn. Cheers. It's well, definitely minty. It is minty. Here's the thing. I haven't had sugar in like 30 days. So my taste buds are exploding right now. Oh. And I also don't drink coffee. So I may be jumping around the newsroom after I finish yes, this. We, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I can't taste the coffee in it, which you, you couldn't in the unicorn because it didn't have any coffee. So coffee drinkers might like this latest sensation. Of course, they want to be Instagram friendly. 63% of millennials say they take pictures of their food and drink. Uh, Janela, so Starbucks wants in on some of that free advertising. All right. Thanks so much, Richard. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Cheers.